Hello everyone, we are live and it is Thursday Live Lesson. My name is Aldrin Guerrero and joining me is Mr. Aaron, the voice Nakamura. Say what's up, Aaron. What's up? And as usual, Mr. Kahai, the legend Fergan. Say what's up, Kahai. What's up? So how this works is you guys send us questions. We answer them as best as we can. And uh, this format is in video format for all of you UU Plus subscribers or as podcast for all of you folks who want to download this on iTunes. So uh, without any further ado, Kahai is going to pitch me some questions. I'm going to try to answer them and then all three of us are going to, you know, delegate and kind of just talk about the question in general and see if we can create a nice lengthy discussion on it. All right. So here we go. Kahai. Uh, the first one was on, actually on mm. Guava Jam. Okay. So, um, and it's from Tony. And Tony said, I'm interested in knowing how best to pick with my right hand. Mm -hmm. uh, do I just use one finger to repeatedly hit the strings or do I alternate between uh, index, middle and ring? Uh, what's the best way to practice and what will be the simplest way to do the right hand motions? Okay, so if we're talking about uh, Guava Jam, now Guava Jam using only one finger would be a little bit too, you know, too difficult. It's, it's, it is a finger picking song. So when we're talking finger picking songs, it's going to require at least two or more fingers. Uh, when I was, you know, a little, little about myself, when I was uh, first learning this song, this is actually the first like major ukulele song that I learned, major ukulele. But, <laughs> but um, you know, it's it's the first like picking song, you know, like I, I didn't really learn like a full picking song before then. And when I was learning it, I um, I actually just used these two fingers, you know, and um, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't an advanced player um, and, and I, I really wanted to kind of learn it. And when I was learning it, I was just trying to figure out the melody lines, which was... So when I was first learning, I was just going... Uh, And I was just doing that. And I was just kind of listening in to when the notes would sound lower. So um, I was just listening to the melody line and using my pointer finger to make sure that I hit those. Um, I think in the beginning, like, I didn't even hit the other two. I just went. And then I kind of started hitting the other strings too, maybe with my uh, with my thumb. So the evolution goes from that and then using my two fingers now to play all four strings. And the reason why I'm using the other uh, the other fingers, I notice that I'm playing that note too much. So when I'm going, I only really need to hear it. So what that meant was I was going to only hit the A string when I wanted to hear. And that gave me a lot of time in between each note. So I would go. It's just me playing the A, G, and E strings with my pointer and my and my thumb. Okay? So I was just kind of alternate between these two, but then it sounded uh, started to sound kind of boring, so I started to add that third string. And why I started to add that was because if I went here and I went here, the next note would be that to go lower. But um, so just adding that at the last uh, at the last second of that phrase creates. Kind of like this, um, the, almost this piano like um, sound to it. Now, if you're a beginner, you can totally do it. Do this with just a thumb and a pointer, just like how I did. But like later on, you want to start to you know use three fingers. You want to start to you know dedicate certain um, certain fingers to uh, certain strings. Okay, so that you have an easier time because this takes a lot of effort. When you do it with the pointer and the middle finger and the thumb, your pointer doesn't have to, uh, to move as much. So you can delegate your pointer to the E and the C string for this song, middle finger for the A. So that means you only use your middle finger when you're hitting. And everything else is with your thumb and pointer. So I think, and doing that, like doing that pattern again, yeah. it's thumb, middle, 
a pointer, thumb, middle, pointer. Like um, middle of... first. So oh, middle, yeah. thumb, pointer. So, ba ba ba. So thumb, middle, pointer. Alright. So thumb, thumb, because you're going bump. So you have those two notes, bump, ba bum, ba bum. So it goes. And right at the end, you're gonna hit that C. So. So the the pattern basically is uh, melody line, and then G E. So. And at the end of the phrase, you can hit a C. So. Strum. Okay, so same thing with the G7. I'm I'm hitting the um I'm hitting the A string. So G E, just like I said. But then right at the end, I'm gonna hit that C string. So. So. So all you have to do is uh, think about the melody lines. So even if you're not, um, you know, playing this perfect, because uh, when you listen to the original, it might not line up with what I'm doing. You know, uh, I'm just kind of filling in the gaps, is what it is. Because what your ear really hears is, and a bunch of notes in between. But those notes um, can be random. You know, if uh, if you if you should choose to let it be random, you can let it be random because um, anything else. Behind that, behind that phrase is going to be just, uh, just rhythm patterns. So rhythm pattern meaning you can just you know as long as it keeps the rhythm, as long as you're in the right chord, it should be okay. And that first you know that first chord to guava jam is C, and then it goes to G7, and that's why we play a G7 at the end. So you can do because when we play our C chord, A string third fret. The other three strings right here are open, so we can play whatever we want there. So even if I wanted to, you know, use the C instead of the E, so I can do so. So I'm using that C. All you're, all you're hearing still is that's what's gonna stand out versus. Right, so that background rhythm pattern, I mean, as long as you're in key, doesn't really make too big of a difference. You know, if, it's gonna make a big difference if uh, if you're playing like a complicated chord and you know, and you really need to hear those notes. But as far as guava jam goes, um, the melody line is on the A string, it's on the one string. So if you, you know, if, as long as you keep the melody line there, you can play anything else on the other strings. Yeah, I think a lot of like. If you listen to a lot of Cover Creator Boys, it kind of does sound like it relies heavily on the A string. Yeah. Yeah, and then like most of the other finger picking is it is kind of just like uh, whatever fits random. in. Right or random? Yeah, yeah it's just random. Yeah. Like I, you know, that's that's what I learned. That's why I wanted to kind of explain my thought process of that. And that's the first thing that you know that I listened to when I was trying to figure this out because we didn't have you know I was a I was a beginner into me like kind of an intermediate player at that time, and it's just like. I, I love this song, but how do I go about figuring out like this crazy hectic song? And um, my first approach was that I'm like, okay, I'm gonna figure out the main melody yeah. line first. Listen for that first. So when you listen to that, and then you just fill in everything else, then it kind of starts to make sense. They're like, okay, well maybe he's playing this because um, that note doesn't sound that low. So if I go, it doesn't go that low until right at the end. So I'm like, okay, that means I gotta stay away from the C string. So if I do, uh, and hit the C string right at the end, that's gonna create that effect. So even if I stayed away from the E, uh, uh, so I'm using that G the whole time. Right at the end, I do that that um, that walk down. Um, that's that's kind of how I figured it out. So um, your original question, I wouldn't use pointer finger because when you're using your pointer finger, um, where you're you know you could be doing that's a lot of work for that pointer finger to yeah, do just for one yeah you know for one finger only so, pointer finger. yeah only pointer yeah. finger. So I would use at least two. Um, you know, finger picking pattern wise, at least two. 
check out um you know videos on like uh into out picking out to in picking or into out to in picking we have all that stuff over on um on nuke minutes and that'll kind of help you get an idea of um and also like 101 i think we covered um finger picking so you can check all that stuff out and uh, and kind of get better at doing finger picking patterns from two finger to three finger picking uh, finger pickings the, the other thing I noticed just you doing it right now is mm -hmm. that uh, sometimes you use your pointer finger to play hit that C string and then other times you use your thumb yeah because like, it doesn't really you know it doesn't really matter as long as you're hitting those and you have other you have you have five fingers you know, technically right you have more fingers than you do have you have strings so yeah oh, I think like uh, and that hitting that C string with your thumb it mm -hmm. does make sense because that's yeah normal that's right. not out of place right. so so thumb can be used for the G and C. I you know I say that a lot, but for this particular song, um, it's got a lot of this like G string um, drone. So I kind of have my my thumb just do droning on the G there. That was a, another video I was gonna mention mm -hmm. is a two string pull off. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like it kind of uses that same technique mm -hmm. of using, like using your thumb mainly for the G string and yeah. then using your pointer or your middle. For yeah, the yeah, strings. for for everything else. So. You know, once you get the two finger style down, you can work on you know getting three. But uh, for you know for somebody who's just kind of starting out with finger picking, I would you know I would stick with two for now until you can you know get coordinated with three because it's hard to kind of coordinate all three fingers and just you might get confused a little bit. So starting out with two is perfect. Yeah, and I think uh, like uh, like when you're mm -hmm. playing with the the C string, like substituting the C string for yeah. The, the in between pickings too, like I think uh, if you play that, like most people are not gonna be like, yeah, you're not, yeah, you're that's not, not guava jam. It's <laughs> like it's still guava jam, you know. Like you can you can substitute that C in there, totally fine. It's still gonna be the song because the the song is the melody line of. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it's what we talked about in mm -hmm. uh, deconstructing melody yeah, or melodies. chord melodies. Chord, chord melodies, yeah. You want to highlight the the melody line, yeah. but then pretty much anything behind it is just like yeah. supporting actors and actresses. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. try and make it sound good, but <laughs> yeah, know, of course, like, yeah. of course. So you still have to play the right notes. You know, you still have to play, um, but the right notes can be any one of the three notes in that chord that's backing it up. The the fun thing about playing like. Kyle Crater Boys, Troy Fernandez, that kind of mm -hmm. style, mm -hmm. is a lot of the songs use those open notes, right? Yeah. yeah. So you can you can pretty much play anything and play yeah. around with a it. A lot of them, a lot of Troy Fernandez has a lot of that G drone. So if you just think about it, like that G droning pretty much all the time. If he's not flat picking on single strings, if he's doing finger picking, he's gonna drone that G. So it's just a little heads up to call creative boy fans out there and and like that's something else too that like uh a playing technique that mm -hmm. like really makes it interesting for adds interest to your playing i mean mm -hmm. like the all like a lot of is is playing too like it doesn't use the mm -hmm. g droning necessarily but it uses like that g or c that string g, yeah first hit right like you mm -hmm, hit it mm -hmm. on one and then you yeah. strum with the other yeah. and that's what people really pick out and be like oh i really like yep this. i mean it's it's iconic you know when you hear yeah, you know, you hear that. It's that, that's that C. You know, he's hitting that C bass or whatever. You know, he's hitting that. Yeah, with his thumb. Yeah, usually. with his thumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it reminded me of like that when you started playing that Jack Johnson too. Like, oh yeah, he kind of has that too. Yeah, Jack Johnson. So if you if you ever heard like any of those like acoustic folky kind mm -hmm. of songs and been like, why does it sound uh, so first first beat bass? Yeah. yeah. It, it's a simple technique, but mm -hmm. it's used a lot. Yep. It's really good. So hopefully that answers your question. Next. Um, so uh, like uh, a couple weeks ago, we tried to help Carrie. Who's okay. like, she's the, blind. Yeah, she's blind, yeah. And so she needs a, like a little bit more explanation yep. okay. with the thing. But like um, what she was getting kind of confused with uh, when we after we put up the video um, you said like that you're you're touching the twelfth fret mm -hmm. uh, when you're you're doing that, and I think she thought that's where you should strum is is aiming for the twelfth fret, mm -hmm. uh, but I think you were trying to demonstrate how your finger can't go any deeper into the fret mm -hmm. like because the fretboard is actually stopping it. Yeah, yeah not yeah. necessarily that right, right. you have to strum 
over the 12th fret. Yeah. 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 Um, this, the, where you would strum, so if you're getting confused on where you would strum, um, we kind of tell people that where your fretboard meets your uh, your ukulele body. Or where the neck yeah, meets yeah, the, the body. Neck, yeah, where the neck meets the body. That's basically where it is. So um, a lot of the times, uh, even sopranos nowadays, they have kind of, you know, these... Uh, extended these extended fret fretboards board. and stuff. So you back then, the fretboard would only go to where the neck meets the body, and it would just kind of end there. But you know, now that it, it kind of uh, it extends and you, it goes beyond to where the you know the neck meets the body, that extension right there is the um, is the ideal place to hit your ukulele because when you uh, you know when you're strumming there, you don't run into the hole, the sound hole, and if you dig deep. <laughs> You know your finger is gonna get stuck in a sound hole, but if you're strumming right there with the um, where the extra frets are, you know like above the sound hole, then you can't you know you you can't technically get get stuck in. There's no hole, so you can just like dig as deep as you want, and you know it. All it is you're just gonna hurt your finger really like on the um you know if you go if you, if you go too yeah if you go too far but yeah. you know you just so so but uh, I mean the the. I think we, what we should be saying is that, that your fingers should be just grazing the strings anyway. Yes. You, yeah. you shouldn't be digging deep at all. Yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. Because right, right. right. volume I... doesn't really come from going any deeper, like no, into your strings. No. It's more like how quickly you strum you know? and the the weight behind the strum. Yeah, instead of like going yeah. deeper in, it's like if your if your hand is heavier, it you know it'll go um, or. If your hit is heavier, it's, it's, it's gonna be louder. Yeah. If your hit it's is more, like super light, it's more uh, how yeah I, yeah right. I think velocity. Yeah, is velocity the, is the weight behind it's, yeah, the, like, the uh, hit. That's how I've always kind of th thought yeah. about it. But you know, some people do like to dig in, and a, a great way to kind of prevent that is to strum. You know, the sweet spot, which is where the uh, where the fretboard meets the body. It's about like the 14th, 15th fret. Right? Yeah, like yeah. usually for ukuleles. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I think like too, I, I, I replied back to her mm -hmm. on that original video mm -hmm. and uh, I told her like when you were demonstrating the putting your nail mm -hmm. down on the 12th fret, really that was like an extreme scenario of how deep you want to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So like never, it really is like never even that close. Yeah, it right? shouldn't be. It should yeah. never be. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think she, and you were like saying... You're doing all that because she was saying that her cuticles was hitting the strings, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and that's why I, I figured it was you know it's either she's you know she's strumming it with like you know her fingers bent like this and it's kind of like you know it's grazing the strings, yeah. or if uh, you know or if she's digging uh, digging and way too deep into the strings. Yeah, so I, you're you're uh, the I I guess you're saying your pointer finger is using for strumming, right? Yeah, and so you're. The tip of the pointer finger should uh -huh. be what is grazing, grazing the, the strings. strings. Yeah, and you and use like the side of you know the side of your the tip the side of the tip of your finger. Mm -hmm. uh, that's your fingernail. Yeah? yeah, and you use that to kind of glide through. Yeah, so, so the cuticle is like on, kind of on the yeah. face of your nail. So yeah, so you're using the side. It shouldn't be yeah, uh, the, no. the face of your nail. I, I think the other hard part for people who are just starting strumming mm -hmm. or something is that they think that. The point of contact between their nail or mm. their finger and the string has to be the same throughout the strum, but like since mm. you're twisting your wrist, it yeah. really it changes. It changes. Yeah. What, what, mm. Midway through the or throughout the whole strum, so mm. it's never like and and that's why I was thinking too. Like maybe she's like instead of uh, digging into deep, maybe mm. she's strumming where it's like her nail is facing the strings mm -hmm. and more using more of like a flicking right like flicking yeah, out yeah. which is pretty common for beginners like they get taught that way like yeah. oh this is how you can play and if you do that and you try to strum it's like and you have your finger bent in mm. your cuticle is gonna hit yeah. first yeah. rather than your nail or your, the yeah. side of your finger you're like kind of strumming this way right yeah. yeah but you have to twist your wrist is how we've taught it here on ukulele underground and if you twist your wrist it should you know it should hit the side of your uh, pointer finger instead of hitting it like head on like this if you were to kind of strum this way I know this is I, terrible read, explanation for a blind person. Yeah. Descriptive. Yeah. Um, okay. So instead of you know like uh, stroking the strings like Kahai mentioned, um, you know with the with the front part of your nail, you're hitting it from the side instead and twisting your wrist, you know during the uh, during the motion. So when you point to yourself, 
Okay, so if you're pointing to yourself with your pointer finger, holding your ukulele properly, if you hold your ukulele properly, and you point to yourself with your wrist over the soundboard, or this, yeah, the soundboard. Um, if you twist your wrist so that you point down to the ground, instead of lifting your whole arm up, if you just twist your wrist so that your pointer finger bends down, it should hit the side of your pointer finger so that when you but twist it's back... The tip. You're talking about... Yeah, the tip. So yeah, the tip. The tip. Okay. the tip. Side of your nail. I should say nail. Yeah, with the tip. So, so that when you... Uh, if you twist back up and point back up to yourself... It's gonna hit the other side of your finger, the other, uh, the other end, uh, not other end, but um, your, yeah, the other side of your nail. Because so there's two sides, you know, of your the left and the right side. So it's gonna hit the right side of your nail going down, and it's gonna hit the left side of your nail going up. And that's what Kahai was talking about. It's gonna be inconsistent anyway because it's gonna hit different, you know, parts of your parts of your finger, parts of your nail. So it's it's going to be the nail that's gonna slide your fingers through the strings, not and, through, but yeah, yeah, I guess through the strings as you strum down. And it's a it's a arcing mm -hmm. motion too. Yeah, like, yeah it's like an, it's an arch. Yeah, it's never like a straight line too. Yeah, you're not you're not like cutting onions. So like if you cut onions, that's when your uh, your forearm moves. Yeah, but you're it's like a it's like an arch. Yeah. yeah. We well, you you teach the point to yourself, point to the ground, mm -hmm. to get people started with like not using their arm. Mm -hmm. Their forearm should be yeah. stable, and it really should all be in their wrist. But then, like, kind of, we don't want people to their whole time mm -hmm. to be doing like that exaggerated yeah, yeah. twisting wrist twisting. Because like, as soon as you figure out that it's not a forearm thing, you kind of start to like loosen up. And just relax and uh, once you relax that's when you know like that natural um like pendulum like strum is gonna be yeah and it, it, it's kind of instead of like a full like twisting yeah. like pointing to yourself to the ground i think it's more of like your wrist like if you're telling somebody like no 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 with your finger right yeah. like you point your finger out and you shake your finger at a little kid little just scrubs. going back and forth <laughs> like that is all the motion you need for strumming yeah. like you yeah. never need really anything more and i think mm -hmm. that's where like people mm -hmm. get stuck is they they think like oh i need my strum doesn't sound good so i must mm -hmm. need more yeah. motion more <laughs> strength or something mm -hmm. when it's usually like oh it's just probably less you yes. really need less yeah. <laughs> loosen up less and then try and make your strumming so smooth. relax yeah relax it's yeah um, if you're if you're hurting at mm -hmm. any point then yeah, stop what you're doing <laughs> yeah, yeah stop what you're doing yeah. and um and relax adjust yeah adjust and, yeah kind of loosen relax. up um yeah loose hands are you know is what's gonna create that uh, that steady strumming pattern because it's just if you just relax your fingers you know don't think about it too much and just like just strum like strum where the uh where the body meets the fretboard yeah and then make sure that it's hitting the uh the, the nail instead of the your you know instead of your uh, the 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 flesh, and make sure it's hitting the side of the nail, not the top of the nail. Or it can be like, like this. Not like that. It's like this. It's kind of like because you're hitting the side of your finger. Mm -hmm. It can be kind of like a combination of your nail and your your finger too, right? Like yeah, yeah. Like it's kind of. So yeah, it's not all nail, I guess. Yeah. Because your nail only covers half of your finger. Yeah, and, you think about the side. And when I was talking about, you know, the weight behind it, like the, you know, the flesh is going to be the, the weight behind that strum anyway. That's where the weight's gonna come from. Yeah. As compared to like yeah. when you just when you just strum with your nail, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it really does sound like just thin. Yeah, it, yeah. it kind of sounds like you're using a pick anyways. Yeah. So you can add a little bit more to mm -hmm. the tone. Okay. Cool. So hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, I'm terrible being like descriptive because i'm like yeah. i'm all about like here shit, yeah. like look at my fingers and just you know like check it out or whatever yeah. she and she said that uh mm -hmm. she she might look for somebody who can help her film mm -hmm. film herself yeah and, like, oh great send great, that great. in mm -hmm. so hopefully we can get that and then we can great. yeah help okay. you we're, out even more. we're rooting for you <laughs> rooting for you we want want to hear it want to hear you know what you sound like and i'm sure you know i hope you're having fun and i'm sure you're doing great i think that's like the <laughs> Like that's the, one of the things is we get emails about is yeah. like, oh, I'm blind. Can you help me with this? And it's like, oh, 
that kind of like totally twist me on my head. Yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, I gotta rethink how to explain this. And when you told me this question, I mean, here I am. Like, I don't, you know, like I, I don't know, you know, like, I, I, I don't know about like what, like how, like how blind people even like check out the internet. Like, I, I have no, you know, like no idea. Like the challenges oh, yeah, they yeah. go through, you know. Yeah. So when you told me like, you know, like this person's blind and they're, you know, like um, they need they need some help, like checking out our lessons. My first reaction is like how you know like how, how did they, yeah find how us? did they find us how like how did they even know about like google how are they browsing the internet you know so this yeah. and as soon as i kind of got over that then i'm like <laughs> okay i have to be more descriptive but it was kind of like a surprise like i'm you know i'm i'm surprised and i'm glad also that like there is a you know there is a way for for people who are blind to you know to be taking you know taking these lessons which is i'm i'm really proud of that's really cool yeah yeah <laughs> kind of like I wish like uh, it's always like that thing. Um, we get people who say like, "Oh, I think the ukulele is too hard for me because my yeah. hands are too small, <laughs> or my hands are too vague, right?" Yeah. And in magic, the or like, so I, I I'm like a su- super dork, so I love <laughs> doing go. like. Oh, here we go now. <laughs> oh, uh, it, like people might be like, "What? What is he talking about magic?" Yeah. Right? But mm-hmm. like, I like magic. I like learning about magic and stuff. And in magic, that in the magic community, that was like a big excuse too. Is mm. people saying I can't do this magic technique because yeah. my hand is too small mm. or my hand doesn't fit this right or whatever. Mm. And it's viable to a point, but then there is a guy who came out who has no hands. What he has, he only <laughs> has like up to here. I think he was oh. born without Why? hands. Why? That's crazy. And, and he, he still does card. He magic. does magic. He does card magic. That's insane. He does really good card magic. That's insane. So like, once you see that guy, like, I feel like it, <laughs> there's no excuses anymore. Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, sorry, but yeah, you really like, can't. If, if this guy can yeah. figure out how to get past that. Yeah. You know, like, and still do it, then yeah. it kind of yeah. is. In fact, I mean, we grew up here in Hawaii, um, looking up to B.B. Sean. Yeah, right? B.B. Sean. Yeah, B.B. Sean is amazing. Yeah. So so that's like... Um, he's, he's, a, he's a blind ukulele guitar, bass, drummer. Like, he plays yeah. like well, everything. What, what does he go by now? Because it's not B.B. Sean. Oh, right? um, Sean Nishimoto. Sean, yeah. Yeah, Nishimoto. Yeah. But, um, yeah, because... So he, um, yeah, growing up, like, mm-hmm. we always yeah kind of because he was he was a little bit older than us but still yeah a, i looked a up kid the, when he came out right i first saw him when he was on koi and um he played at like a slack key festival okay so he was and you know he wasn't he wasn't older like he wasn't old but he's older than us like you said yeah so he was he like was a, a pretty he was still a kid yeah, yeah like relatively we young guy yeah. they're like it's like, oh, check out this, you know, check out this young dude. And he's like sitting down and he's playing his, you know, he has his ukulele and guitar on like his on his lap. lap. Yeah. And he plays like that, like a, like a piano player. And it's just like insane. Like, like he that, was picking and doing yeah, all kinds of how stuff. he figured out, you know, how Strumming. to do that, like by, you know, by himself. Because no one taught him how to do that. Yeah. You know, that's just yeah. him like feeling it out. And it's, it's amazing, like what, uh, how people can kind of overcome adversity. Yeah. Like so, that's amazing. At, so at the same time, like, you know, we, we can kind of explain mm. how we do strumming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, I mean. It's going to be by feel. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's going to come be by if, feel. It, especially if you're blind uh, mm-hmm. and, a, and a musician, mm-hmm. you can kind of figure out things like what feels good to you. Yeah. And use that as a gauge more more than anything mm-hmm. else, I mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. I think Mike was telling me about this piano player. Uh, I don't know if he's Stevie uh, Wonder. <laughs> n- n- well, there, I was is thinking about what? Stevie Wonder, but there's a piano player who yeah. is, you know, like a short person. Like they're, yeah. and so I think they're born with smaller arms and smaller hands. Mm-hmm. So they're that's a big thing in piano is your yeah. your hand width, right? Yeah, like yeah. how far, what two keys width away can you play? Mm-hmm. And this person had a really small one, mm. but he could still play with the best piano players really? in the world. Like he just figured, you just figure out ways mm. of, that fit you, right? And yeah. It, it makes it work to you. So I, I think, yeah, that's for anything, like everything mm. we, we teach or whatever, it should always like you try and take it and just yeah figure out what, what, what works for you. Yeah. Right. My, um, my mother-in-law actually, she, uh, she wanted to major like she wanted to be a piano major but she has small hands and her piano um major instructor i don't know her instructor um told her that your hands are 
too small, you'll never be a piano major. So you should just switch majors. Oh. Yeah, it's like it's it's those things that like when people tell you that like you can't do, some people take it to heart, you know. And like yeah. so, who knows? Like she could have been like you know like uh, like amazing like composer or whatever still, like but she, she still yeah she still plays, plays yeah plays right? p- yeah. plays piano for her church and stuff but who knows what you know what level she could have reached like had she kept just doing it not yeah listen to people so. yeah so i think she did the music therapy instead like uh-huh so but i mean you know she's she's doing good still but who knows you know like some people like you know get get a net your rosy to want to like create video games and, they, and <laughs> end up not doing it and they play ukulele instead this is a total side story <laughs> yeah. that we may, yeah, right. <laughs> may explain on a later <laughs> on a later episode yeah, yeah that's remember this remember the, the words <laughs> net your rosy <laughs> god doesn't even notice i am pretty <laughs> Uh, Kira can make like a note, like. Uh, like <laughs> Kai, I want to ask music. you, what is um, since we, since you know, let's go back to the subject of, of magic. Hey, what have you ever had <laughs> any of your dreams crushed? Um, <laughs> let's, this is gonna be a different topic for sure. for, you know, for a later episode. Let's, let's well, let's leave it at a cliffhanger on that. Like, is that all your illusion can do? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask you what the difference between magic and illusion. I've oh, always wondered. Like, no, I've legit wondered that. Like, uh, what classifies an illusion? And what classifies as magic? Uh, <laughs> like I feel like illusion is just pretentious. Like people, <laughs> people use illusion, and it's. But like I think, uh, oh. there there is kind of like, there can be a difference where mm-hmm. people might say illusion more for stage magic. So mm-hmm. like David Copperfield, like that yeah. the stuff you see him do. Yeah. They might call it illusions, illusions. more because it's like a bigger mm-hmm. production. Yeah, you need more stuff, and then like I don't know if you you see somebody doing mm-hmm. coin magic. That's yeah. just with coins, you know. Right now, well, because so. as a kid, I mean, I still, I, you know, even as an adult, like I love magic and stuff. But I think once they started kind of calling it illusions, they took, I mean, literally took the magic out. You know, yeah. <laughs> like that's. Well, it, it, it yeah the thing. it becomes <laughs> like like i was fooled instead of like you know oh i like believed in magic like this is like this is magical to me yeah. like instead it's like ha it looks like see see how i you know like fooled you with my illusion and that's kind of my gripe with the words illusion and magic because as a kid i'm like i be- i want to believe in magic i want to believe that someone can actually do this you know when <laughs> someone can take foam balls and <laughs> multiply them <laughs> that's a stuff of legend <laughs> so i don't know that's a little side note you know like it's when i stop believing in magic <laughs> yeah i like i i don't get too much into the whole like I'm gonna make somebody disappear or <laughs> even like you know you can do smaller stuff of, i'm gonna make this rabbit disappear <laughs> I don't want to raise a rabbit after I do that one trick. Like, no, it's okay. So, where does it go? Like, yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I I just stick with, and I think like that helped me too, because you know, you learn card magic or you learn coin magic, mm-hmm. and there is like a part of how big your hand is to palming or to mm-hmm. doing mm-hmm. certain slight sleight of hand tricks. You know. Okay. So because this is still a nuclear the podcast. Here's my Kahai challenge for the <laughs> for the week. I want you to go from illusions back to helping out Carrie. Helping out Carrie. <laughs> hey, he's not Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to see if he, if he could do it. That's why I wanted to deviate away from the thing so see if this, Kahai can oh, bring us back. <laughs> it might not be in the same vein, but I think uh <laughs> is it okay if i like i'm sorry if i'm outing you aaron but aaron is also like aaron can also do like some magic and okay we, we talk about <laughs> why would that be outing aaron it's like no don't tell people like why uh, are you it, telling people it, it's a super dorky thing like it's, i i don't feel i never when people are like oh can you do a magic trick i'm so. always like yeah i can i guess but it's never like i think the audience knows that all show. three of us are super dorky yeah like. oh, oh you know <laughs> Uh, but like that was one of the things when I started working here mm-hmm. and we mm-hmm. did editing. Um, me and Aaron talked about magic because a lot of that mindset is kind of the same yeah. thing. You know, you you learn what to cover up, what to show, what yeah. to you know explain more stuff like that. And uh, going back to like Carrie, like with a lot of magic, so a lot the solution if you're 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 looking at somebody doing magic and you're like, how do they do that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The the 
example, the solution to the problem is always going to be like what you're not expecting if it's done well, right? True. Mm-hmm. What you're not looking at. Mm-hmm. And so I think the same thing for Carrie, like what the, the to helping Carrie, like uh, it's stuff that you know we got to look elsewhere besides just the yeah. the oh well like this is what you know most people have yeah. problems with like i this think for what Carrie, works for me or what doesn't work for me yeah, yeah. And, and that we we could help her more if we got a video of her playing yeah but like i think that'll be it where it's like we'll see something where it's like oh yeah like we this isn't something that we normally explain mm-hmm. because it's really easy for other mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. but for you like yeah we, we could definitely explain this more and mm-hmm. this is a, a thing we never thought about i think like um when you're doing ukulele 100 yeah like the way we explain strumming instead of doing the twisting yeah. we explained that it's raising up and then letting and your, then letting your go down. hand fall mm-hmm. down mm-hmm. and i think that's just for anything we teach is like we can always like look at different ways of teaching it too mm-hmm. right and i think that's for magic you always look at different ways you never mm-hmm. settle with like Oh, it's up his sleeve, or it's, oh, it's... he's doing something with his hands. <laughs> you, you always... The rabbit's dead. <laughs> yeah. I, I think David Copperfield said yeah. it like he has like five different ways of doing every mm. single trick. Mm. And so if like somebody comes up to him and is like, I know how you did it, your trick, mm. he can do that same trick in a different way yeah. and then like you know if they're like i know it clean yeah. the way that yeah. they said that it was and like oh that's cool. what you, you how did you do that mm-hmm. where's the strings you know i thought yeah. you used strings and then <laughs> david copperfield can do it without strings where's the strings like, dave <laughs> so i think moving forward for us like that's mm-hmm. what we're gonna do is just or what we mm-hmm. we've always done is like figure out we're teaching you guys different maybe the, ways yeah yeah maybe the same thing you know but like hopefully in different new ways mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. It's a lot, a lot of it is like self exploration too, you know, like when you kind of like play around your instrument. And when I was explaining to you folks my thought process with uh, with Guava Jam, like that was just kind of like my way of experimenting and, you know, taking it back. Like I said, I was just like beginner intermediate. I wasn't really an advanced player that I couldn't just listen to. Like, oh yeah, this is exactly what he's doing. I really had to break down, like, what do I hear? Okay, how do I produce that sound? How do I, how do I do that? And then I took to my ukulele, it's like, okay, maybe I can do this, or maybe I can try that. And, you know, you guys have no idea, like, how many, like, wrongs I had to do before I, you know, like, I came up with what to do right. So with a lot of you folks who are like, oh, like, I don't think I'm doing this right, or like, oh, this is blah, 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 this is not sounding as good. Uh, just know that myself, you know, like, Jake, James Hill, like, Kalega Mia, we all, like, oh, you know, kind of... Yeah, what? The button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, Aaron's, like, Aaron's ears perked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, all of, like, all of us, like, we've kind of all... <laughs> we all went through that, you know, that same thing, like, um, you know, and, um, and yeah, it's it's about, like, exploring to, to see what you can do so that that doesn't happen or so that you don't you don't get that bad sound so so that you can get that good sound so um i i highly encourage people to just really get to know your ukulele getting to know like what it is that you're doing um a great way to do that is to take a video of yourself you know like you know carrie you're you're trying to you know find somebody to to take a video of you and um and that'll you know that'll help you out quite a bit you know even just somebody that to kind of give you critique you know even though you can't like see yourself if you have someone in uh, someone that will be like really honest with you and won't just go hey you're doing great you know like you're you're it's your third day and you're doing this if somebody can really break down to like hey you know maybe um uh this like this part doesn't sound good they don't even have to like you know know how to play ukulele like you just have to know what sounds good and bad like and we'll tell you give you an honest critique of what sounds good and ba- or bad and that's um you know that that'll help people grow a lot so just all you folks with you know with camera phones and, and, and video cameras and stuff and uh, and computers that you know can 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 record record your practice we talked about practice last week so that's one of um i think mike and uh mike mentioned that right to record yourself and to listen back and to make those you know proper adjustments and critiques on yourself and you know you can be you're gonna be your worst you know critique and judge and stuff or your harshest yeah harshest yeah yeah but there are some people like man i sound great (laughs) (laughs) yeah and then also i mean the that whole listening is really key you know yeah yeah, like training your ears to kind of listen for things Mm -hmm. and 
trying to emulate the sounds that you're hearing yeah like that's that's gonna be your biggest asset i think mm -hmm. is um it, it especially for someone who doesn't Who's have blind, sight yeah. you know it, it's, it's probably your noise yeah your yeah your hearing is probably that much better than, <laughs> yeah. than, than everybody else's yeah. and so yeah so so really listening to tonality mm. and like um phrasing and stuff like that you mm. could probably pick up even better mm. on a lot of those things and that's really what it takes in order to get good at the ukulele yeah is, so. You know, because that's all we did really as kids. As right? kids, we just listen, use listen ear, to yeah. music, and then you know, it it sounds like mm. we can because of that we can distinguish between a slide and a pull off, uh -huh. and like true. you know things yeah. like thing, oh, yeah. little things like that that m most people wouldn't even mm. think about because mm. we trained ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's it's so easy to like you know, mm. it, right? If if yeah, you know, yeah. if somebody was doing a slide where there was a pull up it's supposed to be a pull yeah. off we could totally it's, tell yeah we could tell we could tell you know? and someone actually asked that like um someone asked like oh how do you do this like this hammer on like chord that you know that uh that you guys were showing the youth minute i think she was watching the youth minute mm -hmm. like how do you guys do the hammer on chord see the hammer on chord like is just something that like we notice like as you know as kids listening to uh like listening to to the records you know that yeah, we grew yeah. up with it's or like, like it doesn't sound like yeah it doesn't sound like they're just going it sounds like yeah, yeah. Like yeah, you like, hear those, so you, know, you, you, those you hear things. it, and it's like, how yeah. are they doing it? So you just kind of figure out, like you well, experiment right. with your own so, ukulele playing, and then you're you kind of like try yeah. to do it. When I was helping her, and I was like, you know, like that is like you know like a very like Hawaii thing, you know, to uh, to <laughs> to to teach somebody is like a hammer on chord. Like it's yeah. it's almost just like just ukulele. I mean, I'm sure the, the guitar players and stuff do it. Yeah. And, like, it happens in country stuff, music too. But like. Yeah. dang <laughs> like it's it's a very hawaiian thing i think even like even having that term hammer yeah. on chord right <laughs> yeah like well like that i know like you guys we made that up yeah well with the, a lot of the uke minutes right yeah. it is like stuff that here in hawaii is like you would never think like yeah you just do you just or kinda, yeah, mm. you kinda just i know there yeah you emulate it yeah. there there's like uncles who like if you watch them play and then you mm -hmm. go like Hey, what did you do with that chord right now? What did what? Oh, what? I just went like this. He's like, yeah. He's like, oh, you just you just play them like this. Like, yeah, don't... that's it. And that's all like, the you explanation you get. the chord. It's like, no, you just you just go like that. <laughs> you just like that. Or like we we were talking with somebody. We we're out filming and we we're talking mm -hmm. with somebody and they're like, oh, get that second G, yeah, or something. <laughs> the second C, oh, the second high C. C. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yeah like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who says high C on the ukulele, guarantee grew up in Hawaii. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, there's the high C. High C. There's a C and then there's a high C. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Like, oh, yeah, that is, that's classic. Because <laughs> you would, uh, you know, there used to be like uh, like websites you can like download. I'm sure there, there are still uh, sites like that where you can download like um, like song sheets and stuff. And uh, on this, on some of the songs, she's because they're like user, you know, the like user created. Some mm -hmm. people would put uh, G, B minor, and high C, and then high uh, D, <laughs> or whatever. It's like, oh, so we would know that it's just G, then B minor, and then this C, and then this high, yeah, like yeah. this D. Yeah, it's not this D or this C. Yeah, yeah. It was really funny back then, and it's like now that you know, like now we know a little bit more about music. It's like ah, that is an inverted <laughs> C. That's the second inversion. <laughs> I, I, earlier, like uh, I brought up the whole magic thing because mm -hmm. there is a guy without hands who can do magic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's like. Well, I I just thought about it. Like I think another kind of thing we get is like people say like, oh, I just might must not have good enough hearing, or mm -hmm. I must not be. I can't hear these things. Like mm -hmm. why can't I hear these things? And uh, maybe maybe your hearing is like not you know your actual hearing might not yeah, yeah. be as strong. But then uh, to that too, uh, there's also like a lady who's legally deaf, like she mm. can't hear, <laughs> and she plays like the vibraphone, right? Yeah. Like, or she plays the mallets and she plays that, right. and so like that person, like she cannot hear the yeah. the own her own sounds that she produces, mm. but she can still play music, you know? Mm. It's, it's like through vibrations and stuff, through vibrations and mm. through getting cues from other people uh, and making sure, you know. So mm. she like. So she's like all the way deaf or like she has, she can hear a little bit. I think, she, I think most no. people who are 
death can hear a little bit yeah yeah or it's like a scale right it's like a spectrum of how much he can hear but i think she yeah she she is i I don't know to what degree but she did a ted talk on that where oh cool she yeah she's deaf and she uses other things to Mm -hmm. learn music and to Mm -hmm. make sure she can play and so it really is like it's insane i mean like you might be having a hard time but really like just I know some people will get kind of yeah. disappointed when we say like, keep at it, keep going, yeah. keep doing it, you know, because they're like, but I have been, I've been working so been, hard yeah. and I'm not getting it. But it, I, I don't know, like it's hard work, hard work and it time is. will really get you everywhere. If you want to like. get to, you know, to, to where you want to be, are you, you know, willing to put in that kind of work to, uh, you know, to get to get there? It's like we all don't be, you know, like. Uh, like um, ukulele superstars like overnight you know like in yeah, yeah. and it yeah. is kind of like a compounding effort to yeah, right? yeah at some point it sort of clicks yeah and then yeah. things become easier <laughs> kind of like, like i, what, I yeah. can't chunk i can't chunk i'll never learn how to chunk and then one day like oh my god like, this, yeah, look, at me, yeah. look at me chunk. it's it's probably because you were working on other things yeah. that kind of together mm-hmm. made it yeah. easier for you to do a, a harder thing so mm-hmm. like a lot of easy s- simple things work on a bunch of simple things and then all of a sudden this hard thing that was impossible before yeah. just kind of comes together because you mm-hmm. you worked on all those simple things so i i forgot to give give a give a clap to to kahai who overcame the challenge <laughs> i don't know that pretty good. no that was <laughs> good dude, that was good i'll take it that was good uh-huh. i forgot sorry sorry i forgot <laughs> well, so who knows uh-huh. Uh, like for all of us in the office mm-hmm. i think the fun thing about all of us is that we don't necessarily like focus on like we're not oh did you see this ukulele player's tutorial on this thing yeah or like oh did you see this ukulele player what this ukulele player we're i mean it's cool we do bring that up sometimes mm-hmm. but a lot of us have other hobbies or other yeah, yeah, yeah. things that we're learning to do and mm-hmm. we a lot of times we bring in those extracurricular or uh, yeah we don't go to school anymore so it's not really <laughs> extracurricular but we bring in those other things and we use that for when we teach mm-hmm. here too like yeah I, like, I know like aaron and ryan they're learning a language and yeah. Stuff. yeah and you're learning some language too like you're I, well learn. i was at, i mean since my kid it's, it's kind of you know it's kind of slowed down a lot but i'm you know learning different types of music which is kind of like a learning a new you know yeah, new language exactly. like to you know to uh kind of learn jazz or learn you know like uh, whatever whatever new skill that you know that i'm learning and stuff it's like learning a new language so and and you know i um kind of like how they do with you know with the language and kind of taking it to to teaching ukulele like i take whatever i learned and i'm like okay how can i simplify this and i can teach this somebody or can anybody even like use this in a normal like everyday ukulele situation so yeah everyone here at the office you know like we're we're trying to look at it from <clears throat> all sorts of different angles so that we can help better like explain stuff or um or explain new things like with, with the uh, with the ukulele so that's our, our main goal is to make sure that everybody you know like enjoys himself and they understand and learn the uke yeah because it, I mean, it brings it back to like we never expected like you know i, I don't think we we ever did the lessons and then expected somebody who's blind to be yeah. like Hey, yeah, I use your guys' site. How, how do I <laughs> yeah, do that? Yeah, never. Like, oh, oh, I would never. Oh man, but like, mm. we're we're trying to make lessons or things for every single person, like mm. whoever anybody can, so anybody mm. can just jump on. Ukulele yeah, that's am- that's amazing. You know, I'm I'm still shocked, kind of like that's it's cool. And I don't want to come off as insensitive and stuff. I just don't. You know, I just didn't know. Like, I didn't know that people could or do you, that. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing to me. Like, that's cool. yeah. I, I think it's like so so out there right yeah like it is it totally is you, know? you just don't think about so it so forgive me for being like i i'm still tripping out <laughs> like still yeah. tripping out someone blind is you know like checking out our site because site you know i i think carrie has been like uh, a part of our site for at oh, least yeah. a few months and if not like maybe closing in on a year so mm-hmm. she's been working at it she's that's awesome that's awesome trying. keep it up we yeah we would love to see you know uh a video of you playing so we can kind of check it out see what it is that you're doing but that's that's awesome or if, if anybody wants to send in yeah. a video of playing right yeah click on that green button so uh yeah i have it right here oh yeah there it is ah uh, oh let me that one this button right there yeah 
And uh, if you guys have any, qu uh, have any questions, questions at ukuleontheground.com or click that green or white and green button and uh, or post your questions and videos to the U plus forum. So, you know, you can do that as well. And uh, Kahai picks them out and we answer them here on Thursdays. So if you want to get your question answered on Thursday live lesson, um, either email questions with an S at ukuleontheground.com or post questions and videos to the U plus forums or click that white and green button. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes. Any, uh, any other business? <laughs> uh, so th this wasn't a question. Okay. This was a message that uh, we got and then I, I responded to. Uh -huh. I thought it was really good. Um, so this person says, Skip said, I live 50 minutes from the nearest Uke support, a music store. Okay. Uh, you folks are the only place I can turn to for help as you are only as far as away from as my computer. Mm -hmm. Uh, you always attend to my questions, and most of all, you folks are always providing me with music to challenge my skills and improve my f playing. Oh, uh, folks, thank you for all the things you do to keep Ukulele Underground my only resource for ukulele uh, questions, help, and inspiration. So, oh, thank and you, Skip. I, yeah, and I, I think, but like that's that's the reason why we do this, right? Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. it, it's just to for anybody who you know might be yeah. having a hard time learning ukulele or. Yeah can you know, not only for people who can't find ukulele resources right. but i mean like that's why we started was because yeah. there wasn't really a place online right mm -hmm. i mean you know like we've uh aaron and i have gone to you know to like to europe to like to asia and stuff and imagine that you know going to like going to like czech republic because of, of all places and like okay where is the nearest ukulele store here in the Czech Republic? It's like it's it's like one. There's one in the entire like entire country, country maybe. Like there's yeah. one, maybe two. I don't know. Maybe maybe there's one that popped up that I've never heard of. But there's like really only one that I know of, like in the Czech Republic. So, uh, you know, doing doing the site and kind of helping you know helping people with uh, with ukulele underground. It's like it's been kind of a dream come true you know i don't know people say that a lot and stuff but it's it's really cool so when we do go to places like czech republic and they're like oh i check out ukulele underground and you know i learn from your site and stuff and that, we think that's amazing because that's um you know even if they're part of u plus or just you know checking out ukulele underground like um on youtube and stuff it's any way that we can get people to just you know start playing and appreciating the ukulele you know it's it's always good it's like that's kind of like the same thing as like carrie right it's like you don't even speak English, yeah. not to say, you know, mm -hmm. but you don't speak the same language yeah. and yet you're still learning mm -hmm. from our, our lessons, yeah, which are really mainly cool. that is really cool. based. So <sighs> I, well, I, I brought up this message just because mm -hmm. like, I think that's uh, for any of these times where people say this stuff, mm -hmm. I, I always like to like respond back to them and say like, really like mm -hmm. It's because they're yeah. watching yeah, or they're doing stuff that mm -hmm. we can do this. So it's always, uh, you know, Skip was like saying like how we're like his only resource, but we're always happy like to yeah to help to be mm -hmm. any help of for anybody. So. Uh huh. See, Kai could have done a million and one things in his life. Like, no, <laughs> yeah, I, I could have done so much magic. But I, I decided. Out. I really like that. <laughs> but you know, he decided college, to work here or... at Ukulele on the ground. Uh, with my high school diploma, <laughs> got the only job. Aww. So, yeah. well, glad you're having fun, bud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you know, did you did you want to do something with magic, or that was just for fun? Like, did no, you, that was did all you think of fun. it like you know, like you could do something with it? Uh, how it started was my nephew. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the only way I could really play with my nephew without oh. him crying. <laughs> so I, I like decided to try and learn mm. new stuff, and I got into it. Mm. Now my nephew doesn't even care. He's like, oh, I see the. Well, I seen it already. <laughs> I see the card, Uncle Kai. I see the card you're hiding. And I'm like, oh, shut up. You gotta be like Copperfield, man. You gotta do it like, you gotta do it five different ways. I do sometimes, and then it, it kind of still blows his mind. Mm -hmm. There's like a couple of tricks that I've shown him, and mm -hmm. I've, I've lied, and I told him like a different way to do it, <laughs> but it's not not how I do it. And he's like, oh, so like there's a trick where you blow smoke out of your mouth. Oh. And I showed him the way of like you can like kind of like puff up your cheeks and yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. compress the air, and then yeah. like a little wisp of smoke will come out or okay. like fog, mm -hmm. really. 
and he does that and he's like oh look uncle kai look at how much i can do <laughs> and then i do like my little secret and i blow out like a huge cloud <laughs> and he's like how do you make it so big and i'm like i don't know yeah. or I, I told him like oh i suck on ice that's what, how you get it to be bigger <laughs> I thought you were going to tell him, like, that well, baby dragon, once you evolve into thousand dragon, yeah. <laughs> you can blow this much yeah. smoke out. I mean, and I ask about your, you know, your uh, your magic career, because at one point, you know, I wanted to, I like video games. I thought I was going to do something with video games at one point, but decided, I didn't decide, but someone decided for me that I was not going to be doing video games. <laughs> well, that, uh, Creating video games. Bring it back to, to your, your mother-in-law, like, when mm. somebody told her, like, Oh, your hand's not big enough, yeah. you know, so... Oh, no, no, this, I mean, what happened to me was I could not do it all right, all right. financially. Um, <laughs> so well, your wallet's not big yeah. enough to, to yeah. uh, create video games. That's, that's oh. a hard one. <laughs> uh, for, for us, though, like, and, and it's like another thing, like, we always tell people, like, oh, you can do it, like, you know, just give it time or keep, yeah. do it, keep at it. It's like, uh, I think we do that because, like, we don't want to tell, we never want to tell people, like, oh, yeah, sorry, your <laughs> hand just isn't big enough. Or, <laughs> like, we're not trying to be, like, you know, like, put you down or make you feel like, oh, but I've been mm. working so hard already. Or, <laughs> and, you know, it's like, we just try and be encouraging. Right, right, right. Like, and, you, you know, like. Yeah, and yeah. A, lot, also, a lot of. It's ukulele. <laughs> it's ukulele. Yeah, really. Just just have fun with it. Um, you know, I <laughs> I always gotta tell people like on you know the, when when people tell me like oh I can't you know I can't do this and stuff. It's like how long you know like I ask like how long you've been playing and how long you've been working on this technique and stuff. And it's just like you know try try something else. Go do something else. Take your mind off of it, and it, it might you know it might come back to you. And you know for the most part, sometimes it takes you know weeks to uh, to get a, a technique down. Um, sometimes it takes months, you know, and it's we we know how it looks like on video where it's just like, oh, just play it like this, you know, we play an E chord and then you play an E chord. It's like sometimes that's it doesn't go that fast, you know. Um, so for, you know, for those kind of videos, just like take whatever um, whatever chord you're having a hard time with. Like, OK, bam, that chord, pause, pause it right there. Learn, you know, like learn how to play that chord, like how Mike was saying, maybe play an easy chord and then play the hard chord. See if you can get that chord down and then go back to the video bam watch the rest of it you know so instead of like uh oh, i can't play that chord i'm not gonna play this song at all you know it's it's like something to kind of uh to create goals for yourself like well, maybe i'm gonna learn that e so that i can you know start playing uh some jason raz tunes <laughs> or i know for me when i was starting off like learning guitar and stuff like if i was trying to learn a song and i didn't know the chord mm -hmm. i'd be like oh but i know like three out of the four chords <laughs> like that's that's 75 percent that's yeah oh, yeah I mean, even then i would play it <laughs> yeah i would i would suggest that too like if you can't you know if you can't play one of the four chords just like when it gets to that chord you can't play just like you know just play a z chord z yeah. chords are always the best yeah. you know so like it's better than nothing <laughs> you know it's uh yeah skip skip that one i mean don't skip it just like just play z chord just so if you can't play an e chord it'll be z so wagon wheel rock me mama any way you feel hey this is not the song okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah actually i played the e chord with four fingers uh-huh that you know oh like this yeah for a long time, really, I, and it, sometimes I still play it that way. <laughs> but <laughs> that's I, so much effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah. And and I remember just like you know working on it. Yeah, you know just just trying to bend my finger that mm -hmm. way and and like it wouldn't go or it wouldn't mm -hmm. sound good. But yeah. I would just do it. Was then... it just that like you just worked on it and then it just mm -hmm. kind of clicked and stuff? Mm -hmm. Or did you have some kind of trick that you like? You know, no, no, no. it would just, doing just this. sound terrible every time that I try to <laughs> oh. try to do it. But like mm, sometimes mm. I would sometimes I would play it and mm. it would sound terrible. And sometimes mm. I would switch for the four four mm. finger mm. method, mm. and then and then mm. eventually it just 
you know, the more that I kept playing, it just got smoother and smoother mm-hmm. and wasn't mm-hmm. as, you know. Do you do that guitar too? Terrible. Like if, if oh, you're yeah, playing I the do. B chord and stuff, you use the four? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I bar and I use the, the three fingers three. like yeah. this. Ah, yeah. that's, yeah. that's tough, man. But I, it, it just, it how do you do that on. so fast? Because we play a lot of fast songs and stuff. Yeah. Well, I, sometimes <laughs> sometimes I, I do that, the bendy oh, finger. The bendy. Okay. And sometimes I don't, but it depends mm. on what the chord before it was, mm, I see, or I see, what I the see. chord after it was yeah. it's gonna be. So, uh, I on guitar, I do not. <laughs> I rarely ever use that that chord shape mm? to bend, and I I don't even use like that full like use all four of my fingers. Yeah. I just use power chords instead. <laughs> I just oh, there you go. Like yeah. and you know like you play or I play a lot of punk, and it's like. Mm. Nobody needs to hear that last note, anyway. So it's like, yeah, yeah. I, I think. Well, like, yeah. Uh, for for most of my playing, like getting to this point in mm-hmm. guitar or ukulele, mm-hmm. I just play stuff, and it it might not sound great, but it's like, yeah, it works. Eh. Like, <laughs> it, it'll it, do. It, I can yeah. I can play along with the yeah. song, and and, it's, and you know, like, you're having fun with it, right? You know, yeah. Like, so instead of like being super frustrated, ah, I can't play this song. It's like, okay, maybe if I play like this, at least I can play the song. You have fun with it. I think that frust- frustration mm-hmm. kind of, mm, I don't know if I, I want to tell people like to not do this, but I feel like that frustration, a lot of it comes from expectations and comparing yourself to somebody mm, else yeah, too, right? Yeah, yeah. And like when you compare yourself to somebody else and you're like, but they got it so fast or yeah. they're picking it up so quick. It's like... Mm-hmm. Everyone learns at their own speed, really. Yeah. And a lot of people, we get adult learners who they say, oh, my kid is picking it up so quick, but I'm having such mm-hmm. a hard time. Mm-hmm. It's like, they're a kid. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. they, they can spend <laughs> however mu- um, amount of time like yeah. just focusing on... Like when you were first learning to play ukulele, you could lock yourself in your room yeah and just spend all that time trying to play ukulele right yeah but then now if you if you started now when you have a kid mm-hmm. like would you be able to just like i don't think i could you know like just tell heather like heather i need Watch to take the kid i need I, to take five hours <laughs> yeah I, i'm just gonna listen to this car creator boy cd on repeat <laughs> for five hours and you just watch the kid so it is yeah. it's different yeah no i get it because uh you know raising my kid now and stuff like um our uh, my sister-in-law has a kid too and it's like they're constantly like oh well at this stage this person is doing this or at this stage my kid was doing that or whatever it's like you know like it's it's not like i'm not comparing like my kid will do yeah like those things and she'll turn over when she wants to turn over if she does it earlier if she does it late whatever i'm just concerned about her turning over you know like now she just started turning over she's five months so like a couple weeks ago she started kind of doing that and she's like crawling and stuff now but then like she's not like army crawling with her hands she's like kind of slugging it or like she put her face down and then like use her feet to like you know so whatever she's she's crawling she's turning she's doing all that stuff i'm not concerned about like what other kids are doing or like how other kids are developing it's like i want my kid to develop i'm helping my kid out i don't care if it's you know going through whatever growth chart where it's supposed yeah. to be and like, i'm just i just want my kid to do her own thing <laughs> My nieces and nephews, they're yeah. like, you know, five and older. So yeah. they're, they're like little kids. Uh, they got past the stages of crawling and everything. Right. <laughs> but like even then, you mm. can see where one of my nephews, he's like, he'll run around the jung- jungle gym. Right. He'll climb on it. He'll right. like flip upside down, do all these crazy things. Right. And my other niece and nephew, they have a hard time doing that stuff. Mm. But if you sit them down and you tell them like, hey, build this Lego. Yeah. they'll like kill it where my other nephew who's like running around mm-hmm. he, he he might have a hard time you know so it's like yeah everybody just like everyone does it different and like and you don't want to you know you don't want to uh like put pressure i guess mm-hmm. like you know on on like on a kid so for example if like oh my kids however like years like two years old maybe you know like and it's still not you know he or she's still not speaking and what and whatnot so like you don't you know you don't know like you might be putting some extra pressure in that kid to you know to start speaking what if it's like it was like a deeper problem you know like you're mm-hmm. what if there's something wrong with like that that kid's speech so instead of like like oh you know let's let's dive into whatever the problem is you're like come on come on do it why aren't you doing it why aren't you doing it why aren't you doing it, <laughs> you doing it? it's like and so yeah. i want to avoid all that it's like just 
she'll just do what she's gonna do at like when, whenever she wants to do it <laughs> i think and we take on that same approach here right mm-hmm. like we're just like oh work at your own pace yeah and have fun that's the main thing right and just you know like if you get strumming in a day that's great yeah, if it great. takes weeks yeah that's don't compare yourself with other people <laughs> yeah it's, so. it's all about yeah here on ukulele underground like we really like self-directed learning so if you can just try and learn as much as you can we're yeah. always happy all right so on that note on the last word of kahai being happy uh thank you guys so much for tuning in to a lot of thursday <laughs> <No>. live lesson <laughs> to a lot of thursday live lesson uh, <laughs> that's what it's called now that was so like we're a glitch. so it's not a, yeah. it's not a, it's not a mistake because we're changing it right now <laughs> so okay. it is a lot of thursday live lesson rebranded <laughs> yeah rebranded <laughs> just because i'm not wrong <laughs> anyway thursday live lesson that's going to be it for us uh thank you folks for tuning in uh stay tuned for ukula on the ground songs made easy and also after that we have one-on-one coaching available for you uh, right after the song's made easy. Uh, tomorrow we have a little Friday Live Jam, so stick around, keep it here at Ukulele Underground. Download this episode over on iTunes. Uh, you can download it as a podcast, an audio podcast, or watch this again over at Ukulele Underground. Plus, this is Aldrin Guerrero for, uh, for Ukulele Underground. Aaron, Kahai, aloha.